fire environment is always changing and it's uh, on the shoulders of our firefighters to keep up with that and recognize that. One thing we often forget is where we are at during the burning period, knowing that generally later in the burning period into the nighttime hours, conditions are generally going to improve and be in our favor. If, if there's nothing immediately at risk, why risk yourself, your equipment, and with aggressive tactics during the peak of the burning period when you're probably going to be more successful with those tactics later on during the day when conditions improve. That's always uh, one of those checkpoints to think about. You know, where am I at during the burning period? Is it conditions going to get better or are they going to worsen? And uh, apply that to your tactical decision making. Topography channels the wind. It influences wind direction and wind speed. Uh, you may be in the, the lower part of a slope down in the valley, you're not feeling the wind because uh, of the terrain. The wind is over the top of you. But as you go up the slope, that upper slope will be more exposed to the wind. And I've seen a lot of crown fire and brush that started about halfway up a slope or the upper third of the slope. And the reason that is is because that wind finally hits the fire and pushes it up into the crowns of those trees or in the brush. So the Some of the problematic fire behavior that uh, gives us control or control problems or containment problems and adds to uh, risk for safety would be uh, spotting from from fires. It's very incumbent on, on firefighters to when seeing this type of fire behavior spotting uh, to post lookouts either with aircraft or firefighters on the hill somebody that can see the entire situation so that if firefighters are working a, a segment of the fire a portion of the line and a spot fire occurs outside of them and they don't see it somebody does can warn them so that fire doesn't race up behind them. Uh, essentially what you're doing with spot fires is putting unburned fuel between you and the fire, something that we're trying to avoid. So spotting can be very problematic and, and put firefighters at risk on the line. If you know if you're standing in, in fuel then you are part of the fuel. That's that's what you know I always tell our guys. Anytime we can fight a fire from inside the black and we're doing a direct attack then you know our trucks stay inside the black, our firemen drag the black with them. Keep one foot, one tire, one part of your body in the black. Um, you know that's the biggest safety zone there. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're standing in the black you're just a hundred times more, you know, a hundred times less likely to get into trouble than if you're standing out in fuel. Whether you're on foot or whether you're in a vehicle. Uh, this year I've seen some fire apparatus um, that thought they were in safe locations um, and found out rather rapidly that they weren't. You know, it's a, a misconceived notion that, uh, well, I'm just a little ways out here. You know, I can always turn and run right back into the black. Uh, that wasn't the case this year when we had the extreme fire behavior. Uh, you know, just a matter of, of seconds or minutes was the maximum if you had a wind shift um, or, or the fire traveling the way it did. So You need to find you a place to anchor and work back towards your fire. Or to find a road, find a two track, create a wet line, create something that you can hold and let that fire burn back toward itself. Do use by our, our greatest ally probably this year in in fighting wildland fires has been fire itself in terms of a back burn. Create one because that's with the flame links we're seeing, that's the only way you can put it out. A lot of the fires that we had this year, it, it was kind of like the dog chasing the car theory. The fire behavior was so extreme that if you did flank a fire down and get to the head of it, it was just kind of like that dog that chased the car. What does the dog do with the car when they catch it? Under no circumstances are we going to put anybody in front of it. Uh, that's just a, just a blatant kill zone uh, in, in front of a, being in front of a wildland fire.